so. Uh, just for the purposes of the video, I know you guys have heard it already. If you have a power source, it's AC, and you want to turn it into DC, so you want that current going in the same direction through some component. Maybe you're charging a battery, or maybe you're running a speaker or something, and you want DC voltage. You need some diodes. So diodes are components that allow electricity to only flow in one direction. We'll talk about what they're made of later. And I have some. You can build this today if you want to. You put four of them in a diamond so that when the power supply pushes one way, it follows this zigzag pattern through your loop. But when it pushes the other way, it can't go back up because the diode is pushing this way. So it has to come down first, and then go up, down, and carries around. So it doesn't matter which way the power supply pushes, it's gonna end up pushing straight up through this. In reality, you can have this sitting over here and you can just bring some leads to that thing in the real world. This is called a full bridge rectifier. This power supply will be producing a voltage like this over time. What would be the frequency of this wave? 60. 60 hertz for household wiring. If you just have the full bridge rectifier, you get this. What would this look like with a half bridge rectifier? That's right. <laughs> Arlo just went. Yeah. It would be just this, and then this is just gone. Right? That's, that's very inefficient. But it can be done sometimes if you just need something. You just throw a diode in there and you only get the forward pulse. The backward pulse is just nothing. It just goes to heat. This is better because you get all your energy. By the way, these things are very inefficient right now. If you can find a way to make it more efficient, you'll be rich and famous. This is not ideal for most things. It's not great because it's bumpy, right? You're getting power and off and power and off. And most components don't like that. We want a steady stream of power, especially if we're charging a battery. So if we put a capacitor in line, it charges up and then releases. Charges up and releases. And if the frequency of that charge and release is just out of phase with our rectifier voltage, our EMF there, then we can smooth that out. If we have a few capacitors in a row and they all have the right frequency, we can get it pretty smooth. The question now is, if we have a 120 volt AC outlet and we plug it into a perfect rectifier, which does not exist in the real world, but maybe you guys can make one, then what voltage of DC power will that produce? Bear, uh, say that again. Are you really? Why, why do I get that mixed up? You have the same hair that comes up front. Radin, tell me. Yeah, yesterday your hair was like shaved, I swear. No worries. Yeah. Okay, Radin, tell me. I, I think it would just be the same thing. You are right. It's the same. Why is it the same? What What is this number? This is the RMS already. So, and remind me, what's RMS mean? Root mean squared. So we take our peak voltage. We square it, well, we take the peak and the trough, we square them to make them all positive. We get the average, and then we square root them to get rid of the square. So we just call it root mean square. So it's basically, if you flip this up like it is here, your RMS is the average here. It's 0 0.707 of the peak because that's the average velocity, velocity, it's the average voltage over time. <coughs> Because this is a sine wave, right? So halfway over, you're at 45 degrees, or pi over two, and that's uh, one over root two, right? Or root two over two, which is 0.707. And that, for some reason, that number sticks in my brain. 
So if we wanted to find the peak voltage of this, how would you do it? 120 times divided by 0.707. Yeah, 120 divided by 0.707. It's going to be bigger, right? The 120 is kind of your average voltage. It's not the peak voltage. Harlow. Well, Pat Johnson, you have like a really ugly AC and it's like a square. Like oh, <laughs> like a square wave generator? Um, so you have to, if you're going to build a square wave, you have to have monkeyed with your voltage already. Um, but what if it's like monkeyed already? You mean like if you monkey it already and then you put it through a rectifier? Or, or just trying to find RMS of that? Well, it would be, the RMS of that would be, hmm, it would just be that peak. It would be the same as the peak. Yeah, because if you had, if you have a square wave, like this, there's no curve to it, right? So the mean is just this. But it would be positive. Yeah. And if you put that through a rectifier, you get a perfect DC. Because you've already done the capacitor thing, so. Like, how would that be any better than just using DC? Because the point of AC was You mean that, this? Yeah. Oh. oh like, that square-shaped AC. The idea with, like, AC is you don't always maintain, like, full strength so it won't overheat everything, right? Mm, no. The, the reason that... Okay, so, have I told you about him? The guy on the wall, who is that? Nikola Tesla. So Roham, what did Nikola Tesla do? He made a very cool coil. He made a very cool coil, yes. He made a Tesla coil. Everybody knows him by the Tesla coil. He had a big fight with, uh, well, actually, he and some other people had a big fight with um, Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison did what? He invented the light bulb. He actually just took somebody else's invention and made it very profitable. And he was a very good businessman. Although not that good, because he died penniless. Um, no, Westinghouse was filthy rich. Okay, tell me for us. Uh, Nikola Tesla used DC and Thomas Edison used AC and they like fought over which was the opposite way. Yeah. But they fought over which was better and the yeah. winner got to like light up New York for the first time. And yeah, and Tesla and there. essentially the world. Um, Edison wanted DC because as Edward said, it's nice to have this nice continuous power, right? Um, the trouble with DC is that it's really hard to change the voltage of DC. So if you have 120 volts DC, it's 120 volts. You can't, you can't easily step it up or down. And so to power a city, you would need a generator every few blocks. And you'd have to be producing that DC power um, in those places because you, in order to efficiently transport electricity, it has to be high voltage. Why is that? It has to be high voltage. Why is high voltage better, like more efficient? I don't know if I went through this with you guys actually. Do you know this formula? Did we do this? Yes. No, but we should know it. Yes. Okay. So this comes from I equals Q over T, right? And what's what's voltage? Joules per coulomb, which is energy per charge, right? If I multiply these two, what do I get? Yes. These cancel out. And you have energy over time, which is power. Sometimes it's nice to think about it in units, right? So a, a current is in amps, which is a coulomb per second, right? So if you do the units, you have a coulomb per second, and a volt is a joule per coulomb, right? 
So the Coulomb's cancel out, you got joule per second. Joule per second is power, right? So power is IV. If I want to transmit the same amount of power at a higher voltage, what happens to my current? It goes down. That's very important. Why do you want less current? Less hot. That's right. You want the least amount of heat possible flowing through your wire, right? Because every time, every joule of heat you lose, that's, that's energy you can't use in your house or something, right? So, we can transport electricity efficiently long distances if we can have a high voltage, super high voltage. So the wires outside on the street there are about 10,000 volts in the top. If I put 10,000 volts into your house, that's bad, why? Yeah, if you get a short run, right? It's bad, lots of power, too much. <laughs> With AC power, now this is going into the next unit, so you don't need to know this just yet, but you will. You can use a transformer. So you can have two coils of wire. Like these. And if you have, well, let's do this one. So if you have this coil of wire and this coil of wire, and you put them beside each other, and if they share a core, especially a circular core works really well. And if I feed current into this, it will create a magnetic field. All current carrying wires create magnetic field. And it's really concentrated through the center of the coil. And that magnetic field, if it's carried over to a different coil, so they're not connected electrically, they're just connected magnetically. So this current makes magnetic field. The magnetic field going through this coil will create a current. If my coils have different numbers of turns, it will create a different voltage. So I, and this is a very efficient uh, device. And Nikola Tesla knew that. And so he knew that there's no way we're doing DC. It's not gonna work, it's too inefficient. But if we have transformers like this, we can efficiently transmit electricity from a long way away from our hydroelectric station. We can have really high voltage, we can move the power, and then we can have a transformer, which is those gray buckets that you see on the telephone poles. And that brings your voltage down to a uh, safe uh, voltage you can have in the house. Yes, Nicholas? Didn't Nicholas Tesla try to do like wireless like, yeah. Um, electricity. Yeah, he died trying. He, um, Tesla, he was a very interesting character. Did you know that Tesla would not eat a meal unless he could easily calculate that the volume of the food was divisible by three? Seriously, he got taken out to Westinghouse when he was courting him to hire him. He took him out to a fancy restaurant and this lobster plate was put down in front of him. And he said, I can't eat this. And he said, oh, are you allergic to shellfish? And he said, no, there's no way of knowing this, the volume of this food. And it has to be divisible by three. Otherwise I can't eat it. So he ate saltine crackers. Most of his life he ate only saltine crackers because he could, it was like in a, like a three by three shape and he could divide it. Oh my God. Yeah, it was really, he's really, really eccentric and interesting person. And he, and he made tons of money because he understood AC and then he lost it all, yeah. He put it all into building these massive towers and he wanted to transmit the electricity wirelessly. <laughs> yes, that's right, Mark, yeah. So he, uh, yeah, he died poor, but he, he lived, that's for sure. He, he was, um, there was an attempted murder. Uh, we, they never found out, like it was never linked to Edison, but the building that Tesla was working in burned to the ground, and he was in it, and they got him out, but um, it was close. Yeah, it's a very interesting story. The, the lighting up of the world, the electrical world, is fascinating. 
Uh, I'm going to give you some time today. Who here has tried some of the problems that I posted? Okay. Who's done the, the I think the first set is 581, isn't it? So there's five, there's 551, but isn't it before that 581, and then doesn't 582 come after? I could be wrong about this. <laughs> no, I know. Uh, I gave some, some initial 581, I, I think I did. Some simple circuits, right? I'm still looking at order on Foster. Oh, I think I did say the 551 first. It's 551 first, but 551. You might want to start with the 581. And then, because they're quite simple, I think, the first set. I'm going to do these in front of you today. I'll give you some time to get working or whatever, but I'm just going to do them all, and I'll film it. And so uh, I'll do them on the board or on paper or whatever. You can either follow along, or you can watch the video later, or you can... I don't have a set of solutions, so I'm going to make a set, and I'll video it so you can see how I go through it. Yes, Rudine? Sure. I think you under some questions where it's like, it'll say the wire is like convert, where it's tungsten, or yeah. it's aluminum and stuff. So like, so like, it doesn't matter unless it's asking for like electron velocity. And so if it asks for resistance, it doesn't matter why it does. If you, if you're, if it's asking for resistance and it gives you like voltage and a way to find the current, then you can just calculate it, right? It doesn't matter what material it is. There's one where it's like compared to the resistance of a 10 meter aluminum wire and then the resistance of a uh, 15 meter copper. Yeah, sorry. So there, that is, you do need to know the, and there's a table in there with resistance per meter of that particular wire. Oh. You have to, it's just a value you have to look up. There's a formula for it. Uh, 